What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at fabric pilling. In this episode, we'll be discussing what fabric pilling actually is, what causes fabrics to pill, how you can prevent it today, and ultimately, we'll also discuss what types of fibers are more prone to pilling than others. This is going to appeal to you whether you're a consumer and you've had your favorite hoodie or shirt pill on you, or you're a designer looking to select the right types of fabrics and want to prevent pilling in the finished product. So if you've ever been frustrated or interested in why fabrics spill and how to prevent it, this is gonna be the video for you. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. Getting right into it, we'll look at what fabric pilling actually is. A pill, or more commonly known as a lint ball, fuzz ball, or a bobble, these are the small balls of fibers that you see forming on the surface of your fabric and they're caused by abrasion on that fabric. Over time, the more that fabric piece is subjected to friction, abrasion, scratching, all of these things causes the fibers on the surface of the fabric to come up and to roll into these mini balls of fibers or what we call as pills. This is traditionally seen as making the fabric look cheap, unsightly, or even excessively worn in. So it's not something that's traditionally desired. So what actually causes pilling? Well, the first thing that we need to understand is all fabrics are formed of fibers. And these fibers, depending on how loose they are, will have the tendency to come up to the surface of the fabric. And over time, over natural friction, they will ball up and cause these rounded or small fuzz balls which we consider as pills. These pills are held onto the surface of the fabric by the remaining fiber structure that are actually acting as Velcro onto these small pill balls. One thing to note is that pretty much anything from day to day can actually cause pilling. Normal movements like walking, moving, sitting, stretching, creates friction on the surface of the fabric that can cause these lint balls to create and actually cause the pilling effect to happen. But it also depends on what fibers actually construct that garment. One thing that can actually cause peeling to happen faster is more extreme or more agitated movements, like putting a fabric through a wash cycle. The agitation caused by this wash cycle, the tumble effect, these fabrics rubbing up against each other, accelerates the process of peeling and can create a larger issue than normal day-to-day -day movements. It's extremely important to note that peeling is not a fabric defect or default. Pilling is a natural occurrence that is created by normal and unavoidable everyday wear and tear and does not affect the performance or functionality of a fabric long term. When it comes to which type of fabric or fiber is more prone to pilling, synthetic fibers actually are more prone to showing the effects of pilling. This is because natural fibers actually shed their loose fibers much more readily and much more easily. The loose fibers just sort of float away. Whereas because of the stronger man-made nature of synthetic fibers, they tend to hold on to their pills much more readily, which causes the effect or the illusion of pilling, whereas you may not necessarily see that on natural fibers. But this isn't to say that synthetic fibers pill more easily than natural fibers, it's just that they hold on to the pills much better. It's actually because of natural fibers' weaker structure that they tend to pill more readily. Also, one thing to note, when it comes to the construction techniques, knitted fabrics, because of their looser knit and construction structure, will pill much more readily and easily than woven fabrics. So let's just say your favorite hoodie has pilled. How do you treat something like that? There are two main quick and cost-effective ways to actually remedy this. Number one is you can actually use or employ the use of a pill shaver. This is accessible in any sewing or textile care store, or you can even use a pill comb. Both of these methodologies perform the same task and ultimately what they're doing is they're removing the loose fibers from the surface of the fabric to prevent the pilling from ever being able to occur. If you look at this, you can think of it like brushing a dog's fur so that you can prevent it from knotting up over time. So we've already discussed 
how to treat already peeled fabrics. But what do we do if we want to prevent peeling from happening altogether? There are a couple of things that you can do today. And number one is for clothes that you actually suspect will pill, you'll want to use a shorter and gentler wash cycle. The slower and gentler agitation from that cycle is going to help protect your clothes and it's gonna expose it to less unnecessary wear and tear. Along with this shorter and weaker wash cycle, you can actually even consider hand washing the clothes. Hand washing is much more gentler on the clothes and you can actually sort of modulate the amount of friction you apply on certain types of clothing. So you can monitor how a fabric is taking its washing and modify it accordingly. One easy thing that you can do today when it comes to actually washing your clothes to help preventing them from pilling is before putting that piece into the washer, consider turning it inside out. By doing so, you're actually going to be protecting the surface of the fabric from abrasion. If you think about your favorite t-shirt, if you put it in a washing machine, it's going to be in the same load as a pair of jeans or a denim jacket. The buttons and zippers on these jeans and jackets can actually be the things that cause this abrasion over time. So by turning your shirt inside out, you're creating a protective layer by actually having the surface of the fabric that's shown on the outside, on the inside, away from the abrasion effects. Also, if you want to be extra, extra careful, you can actually consider sorting delicate items of clothes by themselves so that you can wash them on their own. This is again going to help prevent them from the abrasion effects of more rugged items like jeans and jackets and is going to help prevent any unnecessary wear and tear that is going to be caused by these more rugged items on these more delicate items. You'll definitely want to avoid washing lint producing fabrics with other types of clothes. For example, you don't want to mix terry cloth in the same batch as a polyester shirt. The fibers that are taken off of the terry cloth surface or the lint are going to cling on to the surface of the polyester fabric because the fibers on set fabric are much more strong. So they'll cling onto it like Velcro. One mistake that a lot of people make is that they'll use bleaches and laundry detergents that have damaging properties that can actually break down the fibers in a fabric. This makes the fabric much more prone to pilling by wearing away the fibers over time, causing the roll up and lint up. One thing that you can do today is consider using a laundry detergent that contains the enzyme cellulase. So cellulase is going to help break down these pills and remove them from the surface of the fabric, especially when applied on cotton based items. Well, that is a wrap guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. So to recap, we've gone over what peeling actually is, what causes fabrics to pill, how to treat a already peeled fabric and how to prevent pilling from happening in the future. If you guys learned a thing or two, please consider smashing a thumbs up. It really does help us out. Let us know anything you found surprising in what we discussed today. And if you guys wanna see more episodes like this, consider subscribing. We put out episodes bi-weekly and we'd love for you to be around. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's, stay awesome.